Okay, this is going to be the fifth video in the series on how to find the center of mass. And in the last video, we actually derived these formulas. So if you haven't done it yet, I would watch the fourth video, and it'll show you where these formulas came from. And in this video, we'll use these formulas to actually solve a particular problem. So again, if you need to, uh, review that fourth video to see where these things came from. So in our sample problem, let's make it look like this. Uh, suppose we had uh, some sort of a flat plate, a lamina, and we wanted to find the center of mass of this object. So we'll use the steps, uh, but to start with, let's do a couple things. Uh, let's give this object a density, and suppose that the density of it is 2 kilograms per square meter. So now it's got a uniform density across the flat plate or across the lamina. Now, uh, use these equations, you're going to have to have, uh, change it from just a solid object into some sort of a mathematical model. So let's put a grid on. Suppose that we actually put, place this thing on a grid. Now, you do a little modeling, and you are able to determine that the function that describes this thing turns out to be this. So f of x is equal to 4 minus x squared, and that'll describe the top surface of the object. So now you know what f of x is. Now, when you get ready to work the problems out, <coughs> you look down here in the... the when we derived these formulas, it was based on two functions. You had a top function and a bottom function, and you were going to find uh, the distance between these two. Now, occasionally you'll run across this. You'll have a single function, and it comes up against maybe the x or the y axis. So if you don't have a second function, then just a little trick that you can use on these things is just to do this. Go ahead and put a second function in there by uh, just drawing a horizontal line right through the x-axis. So let's do that in this case. So this gives us a second function. This will be the line y is equal to 0. And what that does is now you've got your object trapped between two functions. And that second function, g of x, is equal to 0. So at least now you've got two functions. So uh, if it goes through one of the two axes, you can always use that little trick. OK, now before we get uh, use these actual formulas, I want to just put a vertical rectangle. We're going to use vertical rectangles on this problem. In some later examples, we'll use horizontal rectangles. And I think it always helps to go ahead and put that first rectangle in there. So let's go ahead and do this. So we've got a single red rectangle. Now, just a reminder, when you get ready to use the formulas, you're going to be concerned with a couple of distances. And it's all based on this single rectangle. And if you remember when we derived this, this was the center of just that single red rectangle. And then you had a distance, if you were going to find the moment about the y-axis, you used the distance from here to here. And this distance was x. Then if you want to find the moment from uh, about the x-axis, we use this distance right here. And this distance from here to here was uh, the, just the average of the two functions. So f of x plus g of x, uh, the whole thing divided by to. So just a reminder of what we're going to be working with when we do this. So that's what that single rectangle is based on. Okay, so with that in mind, let's just kind of run through these now. And really, it's just a matter of going through the steps and putting in the formulas. So what we want to get is this. The first step is to find the total mass of the object. So we want to find the mass, and the mass is going to be equal to, we'll put it right here. Uh, so the mass is going to be um, just the integral, and remember our density is 2, so we'll have 2 times the integral. And you can look at your uh, figure. Now, sometimes you know the intersection point, sometimes you don't. In this case, we actually know the intersection point, so we don't have to solve for it. So it's going to go from minus 2 to 2. So uh, we will integrate this from minus 2 to 2. And it's just f of x, which is 4 minus x squared minus g of x, and the way we've set it up, uh, that's going to be equal to 0. So it's just going to be that, the whole thing, dx. So uh, let's go ahead and find that antiderivative. So this will be 2. And then um, we'll evaluate it. So the antiderivative of 4 would be 4x. And this is going to be minus x cubed divided by 3, evaluated from negative 2 to 2. So we'll go ahead and put that in, and I'll scoot it down just a little bit here. So right through this, I've got uh, 2, and then we we'll use a double set of brackets. So first of all, plug in the 2, so you'll have 4 times 2 minus 2 cubed divided by 3, and then 
uh, plug in the negative 2. So 4 times a negative 2 minus a negative 2 cubed divided by 3. And that's going to give you 2. And then this would be, this first one would be 8 uh, minus, and then 2 cubed divided by 3 would be 8 thirds. Then minus, then you'd have a negative 8, and that'll be a negative of a negative, which would turn into a positive 8 thirds. Uh, looks like that. So what that's going to be, it'd be 2 times, and again, think of this as being 24 thirds minus 8 thirds, which would be 16 thirds. Then you've got minus, and this one would be negative 24 thirds, so this would be a negative 16 thirds. And if you add it all out, two negatives will make a positive, so that's going to be uh, 32 thirds. And that's going to finally give you 64 thirds. And that's going to be the mass of the whole lamina. Now, in our problem, we'll go ahead and change this into a decimal. So I'll make this be, if you divided that, I'd have 21.33. And we're going to work in kilograms. So we'll suppose that this is kilograms. And what this is, this is the total mass of that lamina. So now you know what the total mass of your flat plate is. So you've got that. Okay, the next step says is find the moment about the y-axis. Now, this time you use x. Let's look back up at our figure again, just to remind you. To find the moment about the y-axis, you're going to it's mass times distance, so you're going to use this distance x right here. So let's see what that one looks like. <clears throat> so again, I've got uh, the moment about the y-axis, and we'll put it right here. Um, would be equal to now again the density is still two. We're still going to go from negative two to two. You've got x, and when you plug in the function again, you'd have f of x is 4 minus x squared, and g of x, again, is the horizontal line, y is equal to 0. All that in dx. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and distribute this x. So we'll have 2 times the integral from minus 2 to 2. Uh, this would be 4x minus uh, x cubed dx. And then let's go ahead and find that antiderivative. So this would be 2, and this will turn into um, 4x squared divided by 2 minus, and this would be x to the 4th divided by 4, all evaluated from negative 2 to 2. Okay, now a couple of these things you can simplify. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and just do that one right here. This and this will cancel out and leave you with a 2 right there. <clears throat> so that's going to give you 2. Um, and again, we'll have, that's just going to give us 2x squared minus x to the 4th divided by 4, evaluated from negative 2 to 2. So let's see what happens when we plug that in. Um, let's go ahead and make this be 2. And again, uh, First of all, plug in the positive 2. So this is going to be 2 times 2 squared minus 2 to the 4th divided by 4. Then minus, and now plug in the negative 2. 2 times a negative 2 squared minus a negative 2 to the 4th divided by 4. And then close the bracket. Okay, uh, so what that would be, would be, <clears throat> if you run through all this, this is just going to be uh, 2 squared would be 4, this would be 8, uh, minus 16 divided by 4, this will turn into a 4, this would be 2 times, and the first one is going to be 4, minus, and this is going to be, uh, again, 8, um, Minus, and then 16 divided by 4 would be 4. Is, this one's also going to be a 4. So what that's going to give you would be 2 times 0, which will turn out to be 0. 
And this the units, of course, will be kilogram meters. And what that is, that is the moment about the y-axis. So in this case, it turns out that the moment about the y-axis is zero. And in a way, if you look back up at the sketch, you can see what that looks like if you look at your drawing. If you have an object that's symmetric about the axis, um, then the moment about that axis is going to be zero. So in a way, you could have anticipated this before you ever started the problem. So, And we had a symmetric about the y-axis, so the moment turned out to be zero. But that won't be the case uh, for the x-axis. Now, when we find the moment about the x-axis, again, we'll use this mass times this distance. So that's where this f of x plus g of x divided by 2 comes from, if you remember from the derivation video. So we've got the moment about the y-axis. Now let's find the moment about the x-axis. So the moment about the x-axis, again, the density is 2 kilograms per meter squared. And again, you're going to go from minus 2 to 2. Uh, you've got f of x, which is 4 minus uh, x squared. Um, g of x is 0. The whole thing is divided by 2. Then times f of x, which is 4 minus x squared minus g of x, which is, in our problem, is 0 um, dx. Now, a couple things you can do here right away, just to simplify things a little bit. Uh, you've got a 2 on the top, a 2 on the bottom. These 2s will cancel out, so that 2 will cancel out that 2. And it just simplifies the integral a little bit. So we'll make this be the integral from minus 2 to 2. This whole thing becomes 4 minus x squared. This whole thing is also 4 minus x squared dx. So it simplifies down to that. Okay, well this goes from minus 2 to 2, so we'll multiply those out. And when you multiply those out, you'll get 16. And then minus 4 minus 4 would be minus 8x squared. And finally, this will turn into negative x squared times negative x squared, turn into a positive um, x to the fourth dx. So it looks like that. Now when you find the antiderivative, you would have 16x minus 8x cubed divided by 3 uh, plus, and this is going to be x to the fifth divided by 5, and it's all going to be evaluated from negative 2 up to 2. So now it's just a matter of plugging stuff in. So this is going to be, for the first one, it would be 16, we'll plug in a 2, uh, minus 8 thirds, and again plug in a 2, <clears throat> plus, this would be 2 to the 2 to the fifth divided by 5, and then minus, and again now plug in the negative 2. So 16 times a negative 2 uh, minus 8 thirds times a negative 2 cubed. And finally, this would be negative 2 to the fifth divided by 5. Like that, and put the whole thing in brackets. Now, just to speed things up in this video, uh, if you run through all this, you'll actually come up with, and I'm just going to put a, put a number here. This thing will actually turn out to me, and we'll write it in decimal form. It will turn out to be 34.13 kilogram meters. We'll put it in terms of a decimal. And what this is going to be, this is going to be the moment about the x-axis. So I'll let you run through all the algebra here to make sure that works out. So now you've got the moment about the y-axis and the moment about the x-axis. So to find the x-coordinate of the center, now you're down to this. To find the x-coordinate of the center, it's just the moment about the y-axis divided by the mass. So let's look back up and see what that looks like. Um, now the moment about the y-axis was 0. The mass was 21.33. So if we come down here, um, this is going to be... Zero. Now again, the units on this would be kilogram meters divided by 21.33 kilograms. And in this case, the kilograms will cancel out. Uh, that's going to give you zero meters. So what this is going to be would be uh, the x-coordinate of the center. 
So it's going to be right on the y-axis. So now, what's the y-coordinate? Well, it's going to be uh, the moment about the x-axis, which was 34.13. So that's going to be 34.13. And again, the units will be kilogram meters per moment, divided by uh, the total mass of the laminate, which was 21.33 uh, kilograms. Now what that does, again, kilograms cancel out. If you divide this, you'd actually come up with 1.60 meters. And what this is going to be, this is going to be the y distance. And I just want meters there. <clears throat> so that's the y distance. So for the center of this thing, I've got the center is going to be located at the point um, 0 and 1.6. And that's going to be the center uh, of mass of the object. Now let's look back up at our object up here and actually put that on and see what that's going to look like. So I think we'll go down to this. Let's get this red rectangle out of the way. <clears throat> and we'll go uh, to here. And I think I'll put it in green. So if I went over 0 and up here is 1, here's 2. So 1.6 is going to be about right there. So that right there is going to be the center of mass of this object. So again, that's just run through the steps, and it's just a matter of uh, finding a top function and a bottom function. Uh, run through the five steps, and again, what those five steps look like were this. So uh, evaluate these five steps, and it's pretty straightforward. And I always find when I do it that it kind of helps to do things like put that red rectangle in here. And again, if you remove all the other stuff, you can see that it actually winds up being um, pretty close to what you were expecting. So let's just get rid of all this and get back down to just the object. And when you do just the object, um, you can see that, sure enough, the center mass looks like if you balanced it on your finger, it would balance just about right. So we'll put this other stuff back on. And there's all the computations. So again, run through uh, this series of steps. And in this case, we use vertical rectangles. And started with what looked like a single function against the axis. Now, in this video also, um, you were given the intersection points. In other words, you knew um, that it intersected here at negative 2, and you knew that it intersected here at positive 2. Now, in the next video, we'll have a couple of functions where you, first of all, have to solve for the intersection point uh, before you find the center mass.